Now, since this is a classic dedicated episode, we have one very classic element of it, which uh, cannot go without being highlighted. And it is a farewell to one of the classics, great players of the last decade, Marco Verratti. A true talisman of the Qatari era, Marco Verratti bade farewell to Liga Uber Eats last week, signing for Qatari Stars League side Al Arabi. After a record setting run in Paris Saint Germain, 416 matches for the Capital Club, second on the all time list of appearances, 30 trophies run, won, the most decorated player in the history of French football, nine Ligue 1 Uber Eats titles. Il Gufetto, the little owl as he's known, was just in his prime an unbelievable footballer. Um, and one that uh, brought much joy to people like myself, Paris Saint-Germain fans, and then who had, were lucky enough to work with the little Italian magician, two R's, two T's, as the famous song on YouTube goes. Jonathan Johnson took a look at Verratti's time in the French capital. The 18th of July 2012 is a significant date in Paris Saint-Germain history. Not only was it the day that PSG signed Zlatan Ibrahimovic from Italian giants Milan, it was also the day that the Capital Club announced the unheralded arrival of a young midfielder from Serie B. Few knew it at that moment, but Pescara's Marco Verratti would go on to become a key figure for PSG over the next decade before leaving a legacy to rival even that of the dominant Swede. Before Paris, Verratti played for his hometown club Pescara and he helped the Delfini to Serie A promotion before the age of 20 under the leadership of cult coach Zednik Zeman. However, the pint-sized midfielder with the Velcro brute touch would not taste top-flight action in his native Italy as he'd already caught the eye of Qatar-backed PSG who were raiding Calcio talents. Beaten to the 2012 Ligue 1 title by Olivier Giroud-inspired Montpellier, Verratti was part of a major overhaul which included fellow Serie A imports Ibrahimovic, Thiago Silva and Ezekiel Lovetsi. Thiago Motta, Maxwell, Alex and Lucas Moura had been winter additions to Carlo Ancelotti's squad which already featured Javier Pastore, Salvatore Sirigu, Jeremy Menez and Momo Sissoko. Former sporting director and player Leonardo later revealed that the Emir of Qatar himself played an important role in PSG's signing of Verratti, who was coveted by other top European sides at the time. Initially an alternative target to Luka Modric, the Italian midfield maestro would go on to become one of the longest-serving signings of the Qatari era. Verratti was arguably the French giant's best value-for-money signing in club history, and his success was unexpectedly immediate with the Azzurri star at home alongside Motta and Blaise Matuidi. The trio was so good, in fact, that many would argue that the capital club's failure to continue their utter domestic dominance stems from the moment that Verratti was left alone in the midfield. Matuidi had departed for Juventus, and Motta had retired, yet Verratti remained the linchpin in the middle of the Parisian side. Over 11 years at Parc des Princes, Verratti would win nine Ligue 1 titles, a record French top flight haul, as well as six Coupe de France titles, another record, albeit one shared with Marquinhos. On top of that, Verratti added six more Coupe de la Ligue and nine Trophée de Champion titles to his silverware cabinet as part of a total haul of 30 trophies in Rouge et Bleu. He was also part of the PSG teams which reached the Champions League final and semi-finals. Ferrati is in PSG's all-time top three for competitive appearances, while only long-time teammate Marquinhos betters him for Ligue 1 and UEFA competition numbers in Paris. Not bad for a player who needed two years to score his first competitive goal for the club and also managed to win Euro 2020 with Italy. Ferrati will be missed dearly like fellow Parc des Princes darling Pastore, but Ligue 1's referees will have an easier time of it given his penchant for yellow cards and animated discussions with officials. Not to mention a passion for the Parisian nightlife, like PSG icons Lebetzi and Ronaldinho before him. Verratti's disciplinary scrapes and his edge of the seat approach to keeping hold of the ball in the tightest of spaces will be fondly remembered as part of his endearing, lovable rogue appeal. Marco Verratti, a true modern league gun legend. Yes, it is with a heavy heart that we uh, bade farewell to Marco Verratti as well. Um... He arrived as a as a 19-year-old, having helped Pescara up to the top flight, as JJ told us, but never got to play for his hometown club. Paris Saint-Germain became his hometown club. And um, 
I think he was just such a, a fantastic player. You'd see him take risks. I I published a little tweet earlier this week of a, a feint that he did in the box against Nantes where it was Jordan Veritu uh, who was coming to close him down. And he's in his own penalty box under enormous pressure and without touching the football, he does a little jink one way and sends Veritu just exit stage right and then sets off in the other direction. There were, there were so many moments like that of, of, of just a player that lived and breathed football. And I think probably the greatest tragedy um, for me, well, tragedy, it's not a tragedy. Marco Verratti is fine and, and doing very well for himself uh, now living in Qatar. But uh, the fact that they didn't get to those last two World Cups, Italy, um, for him to show uh, his wares, on the international stage. I mean, Italy won the Euro. He was injured at the start of that tournament and, and people were saying, mm, not sure, Italy are missing Verratti. Will Verratti come back? As soon as he was fit, Mancini had him in the side. He was key to that team's run um, all the way to, to the final and to ultimately winning. And I was so happy for Marco Verratti to, to be crowned a European champion, given that they've missed out on two of the World Cups when he's been 26 and 30 or, or 25 and 29 years of age, one of the best midfielders in the world at, at his absolute prime, not even going to the World Cup. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he won the Euro. I think his career could have been so much more, um, but in his prime, an incredible footballer to watch. JJ. Yeah, I think there's just so many uh, sort of funny sort of like anecdotes and memories that really stick out uh, about Verratti. I can, you know, reel off just a couple off the top of my head. Uh, you know, there's that amusing one where I think a player gets past him and he sort of drags him back by his shorts. I can't remember which game it's, uh, it is, it is, but, you know, that was a, a fantastic memory. You had the sort of insolent sort of uh, nodding the, the ball back to the goalkeeper with his head uh, when he got down on all fours. Uh, also, I remember... A, very early on in his time with PSG, a blazing row. And I think it was Evian with uh, Carlo Ancelotti, where it kind of summed up everything you sort of love and hate about Marco Verratti at the same time, how brilliant he can be and how frustrating he could be when he talked himself into trouble as well. But I think that was also part of his appeal. You know, if you weren't watching Marco Verratti for what he was going to do on the football pitch, you were definitely tuning into PSG games to see what minute he got booked in. Andreas. Yeah, de definitely one of the great midfielders of, of the last 10 years. And when you hear interviews with players and they say, you know, who are the great players out there? Verratti's name so often comes up. I mean, 416 games, you know, in obviously a very, very a, a competitive environment. PSG just shows how good he was. And, and the images on, on Friday, you know, there's a lot of sort of skepticism in football at the moment. But, you know, Verratti was bawling in tears, you know, for, you know, really quite a long time. It, it did mean so much to him he had so many fantastic matches over the years and he was you know one of those sort of still quite human I mean he's quite known to like his how can we put it like a, a pasta dinner after after a match you know he did like uh to enjoy the the the, the Paris nightlife and so on he, he enjoyed life um fantastic career as you've said I think the the most successful player in terms of trophies but it was sort of tinged with some regrets and I think of that 2020 Champions League final when there was a lot of debate. Will he be fit? Will he wouldn't be fit? And it, he, he came on, I think, midway through the second half and clearly was not fit. And that, that was a real shame because it would have been great to see him play 90 minutes in a Champions League final. But let's not take anything away from a, a fantastic career. And it's so, so rare we see one player, a great player, at one club for so long. Yeah, absolutely. And um, look, I was lucky enough to spend a bit of time with Marco over, over the seasons as well. I'll just say one little anecdote, which I remember... Very well, because it's when I finally got my hands on a on a match worn jersey of his. We were on pre season tour in in the US, um, and it was the yellow away strip that the team had just played in. And I, we were in the dressing room doing interviews, and Marco was just getting his getting changed, and he left his two jerseys there. And I I made eye contact and pointed to the jersey, and he said, "Come here, come here." And I said, "Yeah, can I get can I get one of your jerseys?" And um and he said. No interviews until Christmas, because my job was to to, <laughs> to to interview the players and and try and get them. and And it's true that he was just pure football. He didn't necessarily like having to front up to PSG TV and do the do the feature interviews um, every couple of weeks. So he said, "I'll give you the shirt, but no interviews till Christmas." And of course, I never told PSG this at the time. 
Um, but I agreed and never asked to have Marco Verratti until Christmas. And then when I asked him, I think it was the, the first in, in, in January, we got him in for the interview and he didn't want to do it even then, even though he'd basically been given a free pass for the first six months of the season. Mm-hmm.